All right, folks, the NTSB preliminary report on UPS 2976 literally just hit the street about an hour ago. We've been pouring over it here, looking at all the details. And what happened to that aircraft is shocking, uh, but it's got explicit details. And now we know why they've grounded the entire DC-10 and MD-11 fleet at the same time. It has to do with those engine pylons and this tracks all the way back to may 25th 1979 and american airlines flight 191 but first of all let's focus on ups 2976 what happened okay according to the ntsb report just out on november 4th 2025 about uh, 17 14 eastern time that's 5 14 in the afternoon united parcel service flight 2976 at boeing mcdonald douglas MD-11 aircraft was destroyed after it impacted the ground shortly after takeoff from runway 17 right at Louisville Muhammad Ali International Airport in Louisville, Kentucky. The three crew members aboard the airplane and 11 people on the ground were fatally injured. And our hearts go out to all those folks that lost their lives and the families that were impacted by that. Um, this is a truly a tragedy, but we need to get to the bottom of what caused this to make sure that nothing like this happens again in the future. The report goes in to talk a little bit about the history of Flight 2976, and then it gets into some pictures we haven't seen before. So let's give you a, a view of the six shots now that they have of uh, from the front and left side of 2976 as it's on its takeoff roll. And as you're looking at these photos in progression, it's shocking. Uh, photo number one, everything looks normal. So they're at that point where they've gotten past V1. The pilot monitoring has said rotate. They've lifted the nose of the aircraft off. Everything up to this point looks, according to the pictures, completely normal. At this point, they're expecting to climb out. But a split second later, in photo number two, you can see that left engine now has begun to come up and over, over the top of the left wing. Something let loose in the pylon. More details about the pylon here in a minute because the report goes into it. Then you can see in photo number three, it has started a fire. That engine has now completely departed the aircraft. It's almost basically right on top of the wing, you can see it go almost straight up. Now, why would it depart and go over the top of the wing? Why wouldn't it go underneath the wing? Well, the, the engines are what's creating the thrust for this airplane to get forward. So in essence, both of these, all three of these engines are pulling this aircraft into the air. So those engines are actually a little bit forward of the wing, the actual physical engine themselves. So it's pulling this aircraft along, creating uh, lift over the wings. At some point, the airplane is going to fly on its own with that the help of those engines. But at this point, the aft, not the forward, but the aft mounting uh, bolt or the mounting assembly gives way. That the engine is still producing thrust, trying to pull that airplane forward. It's now going to pull itself up over. It's going to break the forward mount. It's going to now go airborne. As you can see in photo number five, there's just a full-blown fireball as the, uh, the engine now has departed over the top and the back of the airplane. And then in photo number six, you can see some flame there at the very back. That flame now is coming out of the number two engine, not the number three engine. Now, I had reported on my initial analysis that I thought it was the right engine that was also compressor stalling because it would make sense that if that left engine had failed and the shrapnel had gone out, it would have hit that other engine on the other side. Now we know, according to the NTSB report, that it was not the engine that failed. So that CF6 engine, nobody's looking at that CF6 engine. It's a fine engine, uh, no problems with the engine. It was the mount that went loose and that engine came over the top. Now there's shrapnel and everything else coming out of that engine as it's coming apart going over the top. It would clearly get ingested into that number two or the tail mounted engine. And you can see in photo number six, a little bit of flame coming out the back of that number two engine. That was the engine that was compressor stalling. The analysis is still the same, whether it was the number two or the number three engine, that aircraft only had one fully operating engine. And it makes that yaw moment and the rolling moment to the left even more dramatic because the only engine producing full power at this point was the one on the right wing. So it goes on in the report to say this. 
The airplane initially climbed, but did not get altitude, get higher than 30 feet above the ground. Well, we knew that from the pictures. I think uh, the uh, initial report was 400 feet, and that, that was way off from the beginning. Uh, and that's according to the radio altitude uh, data from the flight data recorder. Uh, based on FAA provided ADSB data, the last data point shows 481 feet mean sea level. That's that's not what happened. It wasn't that high at all. So the airplane cleared the blast fence beyond the end of runway 17 right, but the left engine main gear impacted the roof of the UPS supply chain solutions warehouse uh, at a southern edge of the airport. And you can see that picture in front of you. Uh, and then next, the airplane then impacted a storage yard and two additional buildings, including a petroleum recycling facility uh, and was mostly consumed by fire. The wreckage area continued uh, for, to, through the UPS warehouse at about uh, for about 3,000 feet ahead of them. The accident site debris was centered and it gives you the lat long here in the report. So we can see one final image of the airplane now on fire on the left hand side the the airplane starting to yaw to the left the gear is still down but it's going to impact that building and it's going to start that rolling descent and impact on the left side of the aircraft all right they talk about the crew experience a little bit they talk about retrieving the flight data recorders and so forth we know that because they've got the information from the flight data recorders talks a little bit about the history of the md-11 and then it gets into the detail about the pylon and the wing connection and here's where it really really gets interesting the left number one engine and the number three engine which is on the uh, right wing, those engines of the MD-11 are attached to the underside of the pylons that are in turn attached to the underside of each wing. And there's actually four attachments. There's two that attach to the motor, to the engine, and there's two that attach with the pylon to the wing. It's the wing pylons that we're looking at. The center number two engine is attached to the base of the vertical stabilizer. So it's a very distinctive look, the DC-10 and the MD-11, where that, that second engine is up there in the uh, tail. Um, that's the one that was compressor stalling because it ingested, obviously, the shrapnel from the number one engine departing. The left and right pylon attaches to their respective wing via a forward-mounted bulkhead, uh, a thrust link assembly, and an aft mount bulkhead. And they and then they say in the report, for simplification, this report will refer to these bulkheads as the forward mount and the aft mount, and I'm going to refer to it that way going forward as well. The forward mount contains two spherical bearings that are vertically aligned upper and lower that attach to the wing. And there's a picture of that right here, or a schematic of that, where you can see uh, where the, it's like a round thing that holds a bearing. It's a spherical bearing. Uh, that's what's uh, in play here. The wing clevis is the thing that's got the dotted line. And then there's the aft lug and the forward lug. All of those things are real, real important for us to note. So take a look at that right now. We'll come back to that in a minute. All right, the report goes on. And here's where it gets down into the nitty gritty of exactly what happened. The left pylon aft mounts forward and aft lugs were both found fractured near the two o'clock and the nine o'clock position. So as I'm looking at you right here, this is 12 o'clock, two o'clock's right about here, nine o'clock's right about here. So they're saying that those, those two uh, basically round uh, mounts were broken here and here. Right. If you think about it as a donut, it was broken at the two o'clock and the nine o'clock position, but it's talking about the aft mount on the wing, not the forward mount. Now, the forward mount's going to give way here because of the stresses on it, but as they get into the details about what happened to that aft mount, they're going to tell you something that you need to know about that aft mount, which is what contributed to that engine coming off in the crash of the airplane. Let me read on. The fractured and separated upper portions of the forward and aft lugs were found adjacent to runway 17 right. So they ended up off the side of the runway. The left wing clevis, aft mount spherical bearing, and aft mount attached hardware were found with a portion of the left wing at the accident site. So some of it stayed on the airplane and some of it was ejected and came off. The bolt, spherical bearing, and associated hardware remain attached to the wing clevis. The spherical bearing outer race had fractured circum circumferentially, all right, around the outside of it, in other words, exposing the ball element. So if you think about the donut now, 
fracturing on its edge all the way around. That also happened here. It goes on to show some pictures of the actual airplane and the damage to it. And you can see the spherical damage down there where it talks about spherical bearing. It's, it's fractured around the whole outside of it. All right, it goes on to give some more details and here's where it gives exactly what happened to UPS 2976. All right, after initial cleaning of the fractured surfaces, examination of the left pylon aft mount. So number one engine, aft mount where it attaches to the wing, not the forward mount, but the aft mount lug, fractures found evidence of fatigue cracks in addition to areas of overstress failure. So they're looking at this and they're able to examine it and say there were some fatigue cracks in it pre-existing, pre-existing. On the, on the aft lug, on both the inboard and outboard fracture surfaces, a fatigue, and I circle this, a fatigue crack was observed where the aft lug bore met the aft lug forward face. So where those things attach, there was some fatigue cracking. Now this is an old airplane. It's had a lot of cycles. I'm gonna tell you how many cycles here in a minute, but there were some fatigue cracks that they found after the fact, it goes on. For the forward lug's inboard fracture surface, now it's talking about the forward lug, not the aft. So the aft one was the one that had the, the stress fractures in it. Now they're gonna talk about the forward. Was it fractured as well? For the forward lug's inboard fracture surface, uh, fatigue, excuse me, uh, fatigue cracks were observed along the lug bore but that doesn't mean they were pre-existing. For the forward lug's outboard fracture surface, the fracture consisted entirely of overstress with no indication of fatigue cracking. What does that mean to you and me? It means when the aft one let loose and all of that stress came on that forward pylon, it let loose as well, but it was due to, as they say here, overstress, not a pre-existing fatigue crack. The aft mount, had that pre-existing fatigue cracking. That's why it let loose. The forward top flange of the aft mount assembly was examined uh, for indications of deformation, uh, deformation and, uh, and for uh, pre-existing fractures, but no indications were found. So there's the preliminary report on what happened to the forward and the aft mounting points of the pylon for the number one engine. The aft one had pre-existing fatigue cracks and the forward one didn't. It eventually cracked, but it was due to overstress, not pre-existing fatigue. It goes on now to talk about how many cycles the aircraft has been through. And it's no surprise here. It's been through a lot of cycles. At the time of the accident, November 259 Uniform Papa, which is the call, this is the tail number of this aircraft, had accumulated a total of 92,992 hours and 21,043 cycles. Now, what are cycles? Every time it goes flying, right? Every time they go flying, it's a cycle. So over 21,000 cycles. The accident airplane was maintained under a continuous airworthiness maintenance program, which most major airlines are under. A review of the inspection tasks for the left pylon aft mount found both a general visual inspection. All right, so they, they go and they look at it. That's different than like a boroscope inspection. They actually go look at it with a set of eyeballs. And a detailed visual inspection of the left pylon aft mount required by UPS's maintenance program at a 72-month interval every five years. It seems like a long time, doesn't it? Every five years, they're required to go in and inspect those uh, forward and aft mounts. It was last accomplished on October 28th, 2021. It's been over four years since somebody has had their eyeballs on the forward or the aft mount pylon. A 24-month, 4,800-hour lubrication task of the pylon thrust links and pylon spherical bearings was last accomplished on October 18th, 2025. That was just last month. That was just a few weeks ago. So that wasn't that long ago, but that's, again, putting um, grease on these bearings and a, a full-on inspection 
are two different things. A special detailed inspection of the left pylon aft mount lugs would have been due at 29,200 cycles. As you recall, we're only a little over 21,000. They had about another 8,000 cycles to go before they were required to take a look at those mounting lugs and uh, of the left wing clevis support would have been at 28,000. So the clevis and the mount two different times, but they were again, seven or 8,000 cycles from now before they were required to take a look at those again. So that now is a preliminary report from the NTSB. So what we know in the recap is this. Uh, on November 4th, that airplane started to get airborne. The aft mount pylon, the pylon's aft mount, forward and aft, the aft mount on the number one engine had pre-existing fatigue cracks. Those cracks gave way to a failure of the aft mount. The engine, which is now producing max power and pulling the airplane into the air, began to point upwards. It overstressed the forward mount. The whole engine comes up and over the top of the wing. It then begins to come apart. Lots of shrapnel from the wing, from the engine. The engine departs over the top. It now sends um, basically FOD or shrapnel into the number two engine, which is mounted in the tail. It begins to sputter and compressor stall. We can see in that last photo, the, the flames coming out of that. Uh, I initially had said I thought it was the engine on the right wing. I got that wrong. It was hard from that angle of the picture to tell which one it was. It's now the number two engine confirmed here by the photos. It took out that number two engine less than full thrust from that. The only engine that was producing full thrust was the number three engine on the right wing. And sadly, that was not enough thrust to get this aircraft airborne and, and stay airborne. They got, they limped into the air, uh, they reduced thrust. There was probably every light you can imagine going on up in the cockpit. The crew is not aware of the extent of the damage to their aircraft. They valiantly, heroically try to get that airplane to stay in the air. It does so for a couple of seconds. It clears the blast fence, but then they just can't maintain flight anymore. And the left main mount hits the top of the warehouse. The airplane rolls to the left and we know the rest of the story. So at this point, Point, that's what we know with the preliminary report. This is absolutely illuminating. And again, we're sad and our hearts are broken. As you know, we, we pray here. And after I get done with this video, we're going to go have a time of prayer and pray for those 11 families out there uh, in Louisville, because this is a tragedy that probably could have been avoided. But at any rate, it happened. And this is how now it happened. Well, now you know. I'm Captain Steve. Fly safe.